Praise be to Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Dear brothers and sisters in great Holy Father Saint Joseph, there is a phrase utilized by some of the saints. When we hear that at first, many people might get a shock. They may not be even able to digest it. And that is none other than Savior of the Savior. We all know that our Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior sent by God the Father into this world. If He is the Savior, He doesn't need any other Savior. There is no need for any other Savior. But God willed and God wanted and God appointed another Savior for the Savior Lord Jesus Christ. And that is Saint Joseph. Who says this? None other than the great doctor of the church, founder of the Redemptorist congregation, Saint Alphonsus Maria Ligori. Not only him, even the founder of the Society of Mary, which was formed at the time of the French Revolution in France, Blessed William Joseph Chaminade. Even he openly says that Joseph is the savior or the protector of the savior Jesus Christ. We know when our Lord Jesus Christ was born on this earth, he doesn't actually, he doesn't need anyone to save him or to serve him to, or to protect him because he is God, the omnipotent almighty God. But he humbled himself and became like a human being, a small child. And he entrusted his life into the hands of Our Lady and Saint Joseph. So we see in the Gospel of Saint Luke in the chapter uh, 2, they had to flee to Egypt like Saint Joseph was informed through a vision or, or in a dream in which the angel appeared and he obeyed immediately. He could have asked several questions, Lord, he is God, why should I take care of him? Why should I take him somewhere? Why should I protect him? But nothing, because he under, understood and he accepted fully, this is my mission, to protect, to save my Lord God, my Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Savior, from the hands of the enemy. At that time it was Herod, who want to kill Jesus Christ because he want to reign as a king forever. And Jesus Christ, who was born as the king of kings. So we know Saint Joseph is the king, Our Lady is the queen, and Jesus Christ, the prince. And as announced by the angel, Joseph willfully accepted this mission and took our Lord and Our Lady, and almost like a fugitive, he goes to Egypt. Imagine that suffering which he has to undertake, which was one of the uh, sorrows of Saint Joseph. And he was so humble, ready to accept the will of God, ready to protect our Lord Jesus Christ, he went immediately. Once he went there, there were many miracles taken place. The false gods, the false temples, which was consecrated to the pagan gods, were destroyed. People started receiving grace. The miracles, one after another, there were miracles just by the presence of the Eucharist in the form of human person. Our Lord Jesus Christ was carried by Our Lady and Saint Joseph. And the miracles were multiplying, but for the defender, for the protector, for the savior of the savior, it was a tremendous suffering. In another way, we can say he was uh, um, accepting the life of a martyr, much more than a martyr. Uh, he was really accepting the mission of an apostle there much more than an apostle but in all this journey he was ready to suffer 
at any cost, even to die as for the sake of protecting Jesus and Mary. That's marvelous. This is something extraordinary what we can see in Joseph. Ready to serve, ready to obey the word of God, ready to put into practice and ready to protect. There is no second question. And this grace we need to ask from St. Joseph. Now, St. Alphonsus Maria Ligori says, in the Old Testament we see a Joseph and the Pharaoh of Egypt said, go to Joseph. All his brothers, and including Jacob, came to Joseph. And they came because they were not having food. So they want to be nourished by the earthly material food. We already saw St. Joseph was nourishing the bread of angels and the bread of life. Now here we see in, the, in their journey to Egypt, St. Joseph was protecting the life giver and the bread giver. In the old Joseph, it was merely a material thing. Here, it's much more a spiritual. And he was not only uh, nourishing, but he was protecting the one who is called to be the savior, and the one who is going to immolate his whole life, to sacrifice his life for the salvation of sinners. So much we see in the great dedication, in the sacrificial life of St. Joseph. So he can be called as a perfect knight, a perfect protector, a perfect savior of the savior, a perfect martyr. He shed his blood in his heart through his seven sorrows like we have our lady who whose heart was pierced by the seven sorrows and it's explicitly given in the gospel which was prophesied by simon and that's why we know at the foot of the cross our lady shared in the same suffering of our lord jesus christ but this suffering we could not see outwardly because everything was inside in the heart in the same way, the desire to protect our Lord Jesus Christ, the baby infant Jesus, St. Joseph was ready to shed blood in the heart, in, in his body, everything. So much he loved, admired and adored our Lord Jesus Christ and so much he venerated and loved Mary most holy. So here we have this great example. And let's ask this grace today from St. Joseph so that we who are called to be the sons of Jesus Christ, we who are interested to serve and even at times when we are called to protect and to stand for the faith and for the Catholic Church, we should be ready like to give and sacrifice our life to be like a martyr that of Joseph. At any cost, he want to defend and serve his Lord, his Son, Jesus Christ. So we are called by the sacrament of confirmation to be a martyr, to be to, ready to suffer for Christ and for church, ready to accept any challenge what God wants to uh, bring in our lives for the greater glory. So we all are called, especially through the sacrament of confirmation, to defend the truth, to stand for the truth, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ, to stand for the church with the mystical body of our, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, to defend the church like St. Joseph defended, and may we really put into practice all the graces what we receive through the sacrament of confirmation to be a knight of Christ, to be a martyr for Christ, to be a protector of our brethren, of our Catholic Church and our Catholic community. May Jesus, Mary and Joseph bless you all.